hard. We just made it here into Hong Kong and it feels so good to be back. We did all the normal landing in a new country things, we made our way out through immigration, we grabbed some money out of the ATM using our debit card. We bought our new Aerolo eSIM for like $10, that way we had cell phone data the whole time we're here. Internet, nice. We made our way to the train station and got our new Octopus Transit card. Topped it up with like 200 Hong Kong dollars. And then took the next airport express all the way to here in Causeway Bay. We've got our standard $100 per day budget, so put that here. Did I get it? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly think this is going to be pretty tough to hit that $100 per day budget. Just our hotel here in Causeway Bay, which is actually the cheapest hotel in the city right now, is $66 per night, so we don't have a lot of wiggle room. We're going to try our best. I think, I think we can pull it off. But anyway, it's breakfast time. We're going to go find some food. This is 3.75 days in Hong Kong on a budget. Okay, so we're at the Bowerington Road Cooked Food Center. Not the most exciting of names that you could have for a restaurant, but I think some of the most delicious food in all of Hong Kong are in places just like this. These type of places are always right above big wet food markets, sort of like the area that we're in right now. And they're normally not the easiest thing in the world to find. Like at this one, you gotta go up an escalator, go around through a market, find one singular glass door that opens, and then bam, you're into this amazing cooked food center. We just sat down at a couple of open seats. I think you just share with whoever you can at a table if there's open seats. And they do have menus. Most of them are in Chinese. This one luckily has an English menu. It looks like everybody and it smells like everyone's getting the curry here, so I think that's what we're gonna get. We're very accommodating for how many people are here. Thank you very much. So we got the curry mutton bowl and soy sauce chicken. Both of these look incredible. The rice plates are huge. Mmm, this has like the ginger scallion on it and it's a rose chicken. Oh my god. I am very ready for this. Uh, they normally give it to you in like a bowl. That I think you're supposed to like dip the stuff back and forth, but ain't nobody got time for that. I know you're supposed to do the other, but I just like it better this way. There we go. Mm. Ooh, that is a little. <laughs> So tender, so juicy. The curry sauce is like, you can see it dripping. Like, oh my goodness. There's a lot to love about this. That was so good. All right, now we are on our way to Central. We're gonna take the tram to get down there. Oh, that was so good. iconic Hong Kong trams. These things run all the way up and down the Hong Kong side. Definitely the cheapest way to get around the city for sure. I think it's three Hong Kong dollars to ride this thing. And you get just like the perfect tour of Hong Kong along the way. Just look. I honestly feel like I'm a little kid on a train ride or some roller coaster right now. This is so fun. Side, the north side is Kowloon. We're staying in Causeway Bay, which is on the east side of the Hong Kong island side. We're about halfway there right now, but honestly, we're in no hurry. This is the coolest. This is the best. We were having so much fun that we missed our stuff.
This is the longest escalator system on planet Earth, which at its surface doesn't seem all that exciting, but it's more about like what it unlocks as a mode of travel up the side of this thing. And the thing I love to do here is just like ride up it slowly and look down at all the stuff below me, all the awesome shops, all the restaurants, all the markets, all the everything along the way. And the further up that you get, like the more Hong Kong kind of like unveils itself. I know I'm explaining it kind of romantically and it's just a friggin' escalator system, but I love this experience and this feels like the perfect way to like get a good introduction to Hong Kong that there is. So cool, all the incense burning everywhere, like, awesome. Back to the escalator. I think the coolest part about this escalator is all the different neighborhoods it brings you through. We're in the Soho neighborhood. There's just like a restaurant out kind of in the middle of the street. Absolutely delicious food, a nice little snack break. More escalator. All right, now we're getting to the depths of this thing way at the top. Depths at the top. Now we're getting into the cool stuff. Wow, there's a mosque right here. at the top which means we got to get one thing before we get up there. Now we are ready. So I like to stop at a place like this after I reach the top, you know, celebrate a little bit. Oh, it's coming apart already. Mm. So many steps. I think we're, I think we're almost down the hill. down here to Central and it's a world of difference. It feels mega busy, mega loud. There's bright lights and buses and cars everywhere. And it was so lush and green and quiet up there. I kind of forget sometimes that Hong Kong has all the jungle and the beautiful greenery. It's a really, really cool contrast between the two. Star Ferry across from Hong Kong Island all the way over to Sim Shui, which is uh, where we're gonna do some night markety stuff. This is such a beautiful ferry ride and it costs like five fucking dollars. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're on the Kowloon side. We're on the hunt for some food tonight. We got a quick eat so we can make it to go see the show on the water in like just an hour or so from now. This is definitely my favorite side of Hong Kong. There's way less fancy shops. There's way less just fanciness in general. I mean, there is still some over here. Don't get me wrong, but it just feels, feels more real to me in a lot of ways. As we've learned, any food center or hawker stall in Hong Kong, we've learned from this morning, you kind of just walk through and you're like, I don't belong here, is this right? But then there invariably will always be a, a food, like a cooked food center. I'm sure, up, oh, I see it. Fish ball, noodle soup, or the Hong Kong dollars for one bowl. I got the beef brisket and meatball noodle soup, and this looks awesome. It's really hot and sweaty, but yeah, I love good hot soup, even in hot weather. That is so tender, so good. The company sandwich. I saw it on the menu and I had no idea what it was, so of course I had to order it. It looks like it's a spam, cheese, egg, ham, more cheese sandwich. <laughs> Simple and delicious. Exactly what I was looking for. We just reached the water and it is so pretty. The lights are up and the fog adds like a cool, cool reflection. Like there are pink and purple and blue clouds over the buildings. We're making our way down to the promenade and the show is gonna start real soon. Before we can do any of that though, we definitely have to stop, pay homage to the man, the myth, the legend. Is this close? You have to uh, bend. Hold up. It's got to be up, yeah, okay. <laughs> straight, straight, straight. Right there. Yeah, straight, straight. Bend your left oh, knee. Okay. Right. Oh, I feel strong. Bend. Bend. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Cool. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Carlsberg check. Smile gummies, check. We're ready to go. Kowloon side, I think. I'm getting to think maybe we should have stayed on this side. I really like this side a lot. Definitely my favorite way to end the night is just hanging out here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Chill here for a little while, finish this up, take the boat to Wan Chai, and then just walk back home. See you tomorrow. Day two, Hong Kong. Our camera's on top of an orange <laughs> trash can. It's morning. The sun is not super bright, which is actually perfect. We're gonna go hike Victoria Peak today. All the way to the top. Let's go. It's the 
hot dog man. That guy's been there forever doing the same thing of selling these like delicious, super soft bun hot dog things for super cheap. And I got so much respect for people like that. Like I feel like they're oftentimes forgotten, these street food vendors but they're so important to this city. Like that guy's probably fed more people than McDonald's or any of the other big restaurants around here combined. Super soft squishy bun with a hot dog in it with this mysterious white sauce that, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know, I don't care. It's delicious. Salt with some ketchup on the side. 15 for this bad boy. Mm. I think we also went a little bit over budget yesterday. I haven't done all the math, but it felt like we went over budget yesterday. This is a very budget friendly meal. We're just trying to get fueled up for our hike. It's about six or seven kilometers from where we are right now, all the way to the top of the peak. There's a lot of different ways you can get there. You can walk like we are. You can take the peak tram. It's a little bit expensive. And honestly, the view at the top feels better if you earn it a little bit, you know? Okay, so this is one of the stops for the peak tram. This is the one like almost to the very tippy top. And I think it's coming in just a minute here. This is the other way to get up here. Definitely the much easier way and also much more expensive. It's incredible. One of the first ever electric tramways and also that thing's been running basically the exact same thing since 1888, like forever. So I think we're almost to the top. This was uh, not what I was expecting. There's a Burger King here and a mall. I wasn't expecting that part to be so commercialized, but this place looks awesome. Ice cream. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so that little trip to the Circle K was a lot more expensive than we thought. So for today total, I think we're at like $77 already, just including like our place to stay for tonight, and then the hot dog that we bought before we started climbing, and then just this trip right now, which means we're three quarters of the way through today's budget. And if you add that onto yesterday, we're already like halfway through our total budget for this trip, maybe even a little bit more. I mean, that's why we walked up here instead of taking the Peak Tram, and why we're gonna be eating at mostly hawker stalls instead of like fancy restaurants and why we're not staying at fancy hotels, right? And that's honestly the whole point of this video, right? And this whole series in general is that we're trying to show real travel in a real way. Like we don't have unlimited money, we don't have unlimited time, we don't have unlimited anything and you probably don't either. And I know that $100 per day isn't accessible for everyone. I totally get that and we're working on a way to help people travel on even a lower budget than this. I know that watching this trip might be a little frustrating for you because you're like looking at it be like oh they're missing out on so much but on the other side of it sticking to a budget like this allows us just to be able to be here I'm just thankful for that we're just taking all the escalators up and down these places and there's so many cool ways that you can see the view here for free <laughs> We are heading back down Old Peak Road to make it back down to Central. Luckily, the hike down will be a lot easier than the hike back up. And we're gonna go find some lunch. And maybe some insect repellent. And maybe some stuff to take care of these sand fly bites. Who knew? Who knew Hong Kong had sand flies? I didn't. They're really painful.
Kong. There's so much cool stuff to do here. Just like that, a short one hour later, we're in Central. Okay, so it's Sunday and we're at Petter Street. And there's this massive market going on up right here around the corner. And there's also some other really interesting things happen. There are just people packing up boxes full of goods that they bought from the market to ship them off, presumably back home? I'm not sure yet. If anybody out there knows what's going on here, this seems really interesting and all it is is just like people just taping up gigantic boxes over and over and filling them up with like food and goods and suitcases and stuff. <laughs> Tell me about this place. You know, I heard that this is an iconic Hong Kong restaurant for one thing. So that's what we're gonna get. It was super strong and really delicious. And I take in a lot of the flavor. I got the beef brisket thing. But it's just like a hint of spicy and then just super savory beef straight to the dome. Eat it, eat it. Wow. Look at these one time. They're shrimp and super filling and chewy and dense and super tasty. Okay, so we paid about 110 Hong Kong dollars, which is maybe 13, 14 dollars for the two bowls of noodles. It was good. I don't think that it was life changing. I think there are a lot of other places that probably do wonton mean really good here, or really well here. That one was decent. Now it is officially the time of day where it is too hot and too humid to be alive. So we're gonna go back and uh, rest up. And then we're going to Kowloon Pied and things are gonna get really, really fun. Okay, so we are back up, ready to go, and we got $8 left in the budget, which means we are gonna go absolutely wild, absolutely bonkers at the night markets over at TST tonight. So we're gonna grab the next boat from Wan Chai Pier up to Kowloon side, and then go to the Temple Street markets and see how much we can get for like 60 HKD. cheapest way to get over there and I think I think it's faster than the subway too. Man. but it doesn't feel overwhelming like Hong Kong Island does. I love Kowloon. So our first stop here is Mong Bok and it is the hub for all kinds of markets. Like anything that you could possibly need, you could find here. Adoption. Maybe not adoption, we can buy them. They're all just really cute kitties and puppies and I hope they all find nice homes. This 
place is super fascinating because on the one hand, all the like shiny plastic bags and the goldfish like draw you in, but there's also something kind of sad about it. Maybe it's just the way things are done here and I could see why places like this exist. You know exactly where to go if you want to buy goldfish. I just hope they all find loving homes. Okay, so the ladies market is a lot like if Amazon.com existed in real life. There's so much just random stuff here and you come here, you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna buy anything. But then like 20 seconds later, you're like, yeah, I definitely need one of these weird things that runs off of batteries. And then I also need this fake Louis Vuitton bag. And ooh, maybe I should buy the gold chains. And then all of a sudden you're like $200 deep. It's a wonderful experience. There's just like so much stuff. If there's anything that you want, you can definitely find it here. Hey, there's a Kobe jersey. Every single new street that you go on, there's just more and more surprises in Hong Kong. Like all the way from that incredible Filipino festival that we saw earlier today to this, Hong Kong is just so full of surprises. We're almost to Temple Street Market where we're gonna find some food with our couple of dollars that we have left. I'm sure it'll be enough. We're gonna get some tasty stuff. Tang. This is uh, another way to say like a Hong Kong style diner. And it feels like this awesome mixture of like an American diner styling with all the like silverware and the little booths and the very informal sort of attitude. So it's that as well as the cheap prices like this toast here was like two dollars and this giant macaroni thing that we ordered was like three and a half dollars. Granted at face value. It doesn't look all that exciting. Oh it's hot. Hello. It's like super tasty comfort food. It's got like a little bit of this creamy, reminiscent of mac and cheese with a whole bunch of meats inside of it. And for the price and for like the comfort of it, it's just, it's just delicious. I don't know that I've ever had macaroni like this, but the broth is really tasty. It's just comforting and so different. 86, just slightly over budget. Thank you. Oh man, that was so good and so filling and so cheap. Right now we're on Nathan Road, which is the main central road that goes basically all the way up and down the Kowloon side. And we're following this all the way back to catch hopefully the last ferry home. Such a perfectly clear night tonight. Just awesome. I love this city. Wonderfully overwhelming, but I think we're ready for something different, which is why we're here. We're gonna spend the day just exploring this old fishing village now turned into this pretty incredible popular island destination. So from the moment that we got off the ferry pier, we saw these literal thousands of bicycles just all lined up here right along the main street. That's because there are no cars allowed on the island. What is allowed is these incredibly loud gas-powered vehicles that sort of move supplies back and forth from the shops, like that one right here. 
But other than that, there's no cars on this entire island, so I have a feeling once we get off this one street, this is gonna be a lot quieter. But, but you never really realize how much just kind of ambient noise is around you all the time in a place with a lot of cars until you're in a place that doesn't have them. This is a bad example for that. <laughs> Apparently the thing to get here is the mango mochi. There's a big long line for this. I'm ready for this. Ooh, it's cold too, that's perfect. This is heavy, this is probably weighs a pound. This thing tastes just like one of my favorite desserts, mango sticky rice. Oh. This is the first quiet, non-totally packed by like thousands of people place we've been from the moment that we stepped foot into Hong Kong. Honestly, it's a really nice change. I didn't realize how much we needed a little bit more peace and a little bit more quiet than once we got here and just feel so much more relaxed and unhurried. It's nice. We found the shopping street apparently. There's just all kinds of different small little stores that have, again, anything that you didn't think that you needed, but you now need. But these markets and alleyways are so much more cooler and a lot more approachable. There's a lot less people. I didn't know it was gonna be this big. Apparently this island is known for their fish and seafood and especially their fish balls or their fish cake balls. Mm dense and spongy and kind of like chewy. It's got some bounce to it, which is really important. 10 HKD. Wow! Just doing a food tour of fish balls here. This one's a Sichuan spicy one from the place next door. It smells spicy. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm getting a head high. We've entered a new dimension of spice. Mm. 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 Whoa! Oh, that's good. I can't feel anything in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Let's go. After our little Sitsuan experience, this is much needed. I still can't really breathe, but it did clear out basically everything in my nose. So we're at this place, and we stopped here. It's just a little bit south of the ferry pier. We noticed that the prices, as soon as you go south of the ferry pier, are way cheaper, but if you go north of the ferry pier, are way more expensive. What we ordered was satay beef with Hong Kong-style crispy noodles. The cool thing about this dish is that it starts out super crispy, and then as the sauce kind of hits it, it just like absorbs into it. So a maximal sauce explosion from whatever dish you order with these Hong Kong-style crispy noodles. It's just... Mm. Okay, so we've been here for like an hour now, and obviously, bike is the right way to get around this place, so. Okay, so as soon as the guy gave us his bike, he said, if you see the police, you have to get off and walk, because you can't have a passenger. Even though literally everybody has a passenger. But, this is super fun. This is definitely, I think, the right way to see the island. It was only 30 for an hour. Across in town. Brakes don't work, doesn't matter. Brakes don't work? I would just like to set the record straight. This was not my idea, <laughs> although it is very, very nice. I feel very lazy right now. You're doing great. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can't be done. We're okay. Okay, I'll turn this around. Requesting a stop? Yes, please. Okay. Here we are. Got a giant slice of watermelon. I saw a lot of people eating it and it looked really, really refreshing. And it's. <laughs> <laughs> or 
Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. What? Shop. <laughs> this thing is very drippy and inconvenient. Now that we're getting just a little bit further out of town, this island is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So relaxing out here. They just have this really nice, like, triple wide bike path that you can go all the way around the south end of the island. Going northeast was a little bit harder, as you saw before, as we literally, like, skid back down and almost flipped the thing, but this is really nice. Okay, you want to switch out? Yes, it's time. Oh, fun. Now I feel like I'm contributing. This is definitely a dream come true, for sure. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, wait, they got the buns here, they got the buns here. Oh. Hold on. Look at this thing. It's so big. Uh, I got the sesame filled one. Oh wow. Uh, dense and dry, but good. Yeah, that was awesome. It was a fun, I don't know, most efficient way to get around, but it was definitely fun. That was great. What a good way to cool down. <sighs> Ready to go for it. So we took the fast boat here this morning and now we're taking the slow boat back. It is literally half the cost of the other one, which means it's like a dollar fifty or some a dollar seventy-five to get all the way from Central down here. It's just it's such a good deal. The view here, the view is just so good. Well, it takes like an hour. We're in no hurry. It's sunset. Have a great day. Like we wanted to order everything on the menu. Obviously we can't and shouldn't. Maybe we should. I don't know. <laughs> but we just got a lot of it. Okay, so today we're taking a day trip. Luckily, it is super easy to get there. All we're gonna do is take the island line across to catch up with the Su and Wan line, and then take that all the way up north until we get to the Tung Chung line, and then take that all the way west until we get to Sunny Bay Station. Then once we get there, 
just hop out of the subway station there, take the bus, I think it's 4B, until we get all the way to the kind of near the airport, which is the Hong Kong Macau Bridge, and then get off of that bus and get onto a different bus, which is then gonna take us on the world's longest sea underwater bridge tunnel system thing. We're underwater. <laughs> Thank you. And now we're in Macau. I like to think of Macau like if Portugal and China and then also somehow Las Vegas, all three of them had a baby together. The streets here kind of look and feel like Portugal. All of them filled to the brim with delicious Chinese and Macanese and Hong Kongese restaurants. And then also, just a couple miles down the road, is one of the most ludicrously insane gambling establishments and areas anywhere on planet Earth. Macau is about 45 minutes west of Hong Kong by boat, which is the way that most people are gonna get here. That way it costs like 20 some dollars per person. The way that we took, took like two hours and cost like $10 per person, so half as much. Another thing to keep in mind here is that you have to bring your passport to get into Macau and to get back to Hong Kong. There's a ton to see here. Right now we're in like Macau Old Town and then later on tonight we're gonna head to the kind of crazy Las Vegas side of Macau. Thank you. This is like going to Costco. What was that? Almond cookie. So good. I don't know. I'm in no position to ask. They're just giving me free food. I'm just... Yep, thank you. The beef jerky here is legendary. It's like sweet and savory and has a little bit of spice. Do you have any money? No, but I'm, they're giving free samples. Oh. <laughs> We've been here like more than 10 minutes and we haven't had a Portuguese egg tart, so obviously we gotta fix that problem. Field. I heard these ones were great. I'm especially excited about this like burnt crispy top. I saw them in the back like blow torching the bejesus out of them. I'm just so excited. It looks like a flaky, almost like croissant -y crust. This is definitely a sweet treat, and it's so good, so warm. The egg custard on the inside is like a little bit sweet, but really just like the sugar on top is what makes it so perfect. And then, like if you check out the layers inside of there. So the people on that free casino shuttle that we took on the way in were arguing the whole time about like, where the best place in this downtown area was to get good food. And they kept talking about this like, restaurant or maybe like hawker stall that's above a grocery store or a market and I think it's right up here. Centro do Comidas. I know Comidas means food. Okay, so I think we're in the right place. It certainly smells like the right place. Oh yeah, this is it. This is it. We found it. Add the vinegar inside. Okay. okay. We have found the right place. I mean, I haven't tasted the food yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the right place. Oh yeah. Mm. Crunchy, tasty. There's like the leek is so nice. It's also fresh. It always blows me away with all this stuff. All the food's always so fresh. The thing we're waiting on is I think the Macau style of bifan is like one of our favorite meals to have when we were on the Camino was bifanas. It's just like a delicious, saucy pork, slightly spicy, very, very savory sandwich. God, it's so good. I don't know if it's gonna be the same thing, but the picture made it look really good. Mm. These dumplings are great. pork chop grilled between a really fluffy, crunchy piece of bread. It's super, super tasty. It's a little bit different from a bifana because I think I remember bifana as being a little bit more juicy, like soggy almost, like a stew. This one's definitely less saucy, but it's like a grilled pork chop on a bun. So simple, so tasty. I could eat these all day. Ooh. Oh man, that guy was super nice. And I know, like, you're probably thinking, like, oh, they're gonna say the food was good just because the guy was nice. But that's that's not how we roll. Like, 
those are two separate things for us, but genuinely this was one of those cases where the food was absolutely spectacular, especially the leek dumplings, and oh my god, that pork was just so tender. And the guy was super nice. Also, the name of the restaurant was Kitty, and he named it that because he had been trying to make restaurants, and then each restaurant he would make would just fail and fail and fail, but he would just keep going, and this is the one that finally stuck was this one. So, like, uh, like a cat with nine lives. I mean, how can you not love a story like that, right? Okay, so now we're walking up to the ruins of St. Paul's Cathedral, which is just the only thing left is the facade, the front of it. And it's a sight in itself just because it's this huge cathedral surrounded by like hawker stalls and people selling egg tarts and like Chinese beef jerky and then just this massive thing right in the middle. But the craziest thing about it is that all the rest of this cathedral was destroyed by a fire during a typhoon. Which I don't know what that means or if that's a sign, but what are the chances? Okay, so now we're climbing up to Fort Monte. There's a ton of history here, and this thing was really strategically important for the many, many battles that happened here. But what most people come up here for is to check out the view. Okay, so now it's time to head to the more Las Vegas-y part of Macau. And we just asked someone how to get there and they made us this amazing little map. Okay, so they said from where we are we gotta walk 15 minutes to the Star World Hotel, and then we take a free shuttle bus to the Galaxy, and then from there we can walk to the Venetian and the City of Dreams. Which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> so we're gonna follow this to the letter. Now that the lights are coming out, this place is so much more cool and lively. I mean, these hotels are incredibly massive and futuristic looking. And then you've got like cobblestone streets. This place is so trippy. The more and more we keep exploring, the more and more fascinated I am by all of it. that you could get around all of Macau just by taking these three hotel shuttles and not even have to stay at these hotels. This feels all far too opulent for us, but it's pretty to look at. You think those are real? You think all of those are real? That's super fun. Not exactly our scene though. Not a lot to see there and it seemed really empty inside of the galaxy, but we are gonna head to the Venetian next. I love that this place kind of gives you that same feeling when you go into Las Vegas where you know like none of it's real, you know, like all of it's fake and built up, but still it's just so cool and so impressive and so massive that you just like, you can't help but be impressed by it. I was just looking up the history of this place and this place was really, really young, as in like just 20 or so years ago, all of this, like everything was just swampland as far as you could see. And then through a gigantic injection of money from the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, as well as just this incredible, almost impossible land reclamation project, they built all of this. And places like this are kind of like a look but don't touch thing for us, mostly because we don't have the money to really do anything here, but it is just really fun as an escape. Speaking of an escape, we're just gonna walk right into Venice, Italy right now. there is more food here than just the Portuguese Macanese egg tarts but they were so good and we had to try this one it's a signature Ooh. this one's very good and it's warm what do you think mm. better or worse this one's much better you don't want any right
Okay, so I know that we're a lot over budget here, so I'm going to try to fix that problem through gambling. This has never gone bad before in the history of the world. So I got these 40 Hong Kong dollars, which is like $5 worth. I'm going to see if I can solve all our money problems. Turns out gambling was not the solution to all of our life's problems. So I did come back with one dollar, like a buck fifty. Our last day, and we're here in Macau. And uh, we have come full circle, our camera still lives on a garbage can. <laughs> Overall, I think a pretty awesome trip. I don't know, what were your favorites? So I think for me, the best day was definitely going to that island that I can't remember the name of. Chung Riding the bikes around that island, it was so beautiful. The beach, being able to swim there, it was, just, it was everything that I wanted that day to be. It was just perfect. I really, really enjoyed going to Kowloon a lot more than I thought. Just as crowded as Hong Kong Island, a lot grittier and edgier. I liked it. I still feel like the escalator thing, oh, that totally was worth your time. Yeah. Super fun. And there's so many like cool hidden restaurants as you go higher yeah. and higher up there. And, and the Ding Ding Tram is always, for me, just the funnest way to get around. Yeah. It's such a cool way to see the city. And it only costs three. It'll, it only costs three. Like three it's, Hong Kong dollars. What a yeah. deal. Things that I think we would do differently. Yeah. Stay in Kowloon. Know. We yeah. would stay in Kowloon. We would not stay at Chungking Mansion. On somewhere Kowloon's else, side. Maybe TST. Yeah, yeah. So somewhere in that area. Because I feel like there's just nothing for us in Causeway Bay. Like it's all really fancy, expensive yeah. restaurants. Right across the street from a Bentley, even though we were paying like $67 a night <laughs> right. for a tiny little hotel room. We definitely went over the $100 per day budget. I think I would have budgeted a little bit more for Hong Kong. Yeah. And I think honestly like $120 per day to be able to get like one more nice meal per day and, or maybe like yeah. do one more thing. And maybe last thing I would maybe choose a different time of year to come. I mean, it's I just, we're just, look at just always glistening, always <laughs> glistening. So I've learned to carry a towel now with me everywhere. It's so hot. Okay, but that is it for this video. You've heard enough of us talking by now for sure. Uh, the show's about to start, so let's watch that. Ocean's Eleven style. <laughs>